Welcome. Today I will discuss with you the topic of hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is defined as a clinical and biochemical syndrome with manifestation of thyroid hormone deficiency and thyroid tissue. As you know before, most of the endocrine syndromes are defined as a group of clinical manifestations with a background of hormone dysfunction, either hyperfunction of the gland of the hormone or hypofunction of the gland or low hormone level. Thus, hypothyroidism is a clinical phenotypic manifestation due to low thyroid hormone levels. Okay? Epidemiology prevalence is 4 to 8 percent of the general population. It is not so rare. It is rather a common disease with female preponderance. Female to male ratio is 3 to 1. As most of autoimmune diseases, whether of endocrine or collagen background, are common in females. You know? Yeah. Okay. Causes of hypothyroidism can include, may include, post thyroiditis <coughs> Thyroiditis means inflammation of the gland of whatever cause, whatever nature, may end in destruction of thyroid tissue. As the patient eventually pass into hypothyroidism. Second, the most common cause is after excision or extirpation or removal of the thyroid gland by surgery for whatever cause or whatever indication. Maybe tumor, maybe goiter, maybe specific buying lesion, maybe pressure manifestation, maybe Graves disease, whatever indication of surgery, after surgery patient may develop hypothyroidism. Was a total or subtotal. Post radio iodine after ablation of the gland with radio ablative iodine dose or even those given to treatment of Graves' disease can also destroy the thyroid gland. The last cause for hypothyroidism is congenital hypothyroidism. Congenital may include ablation, non-development of thyroid tissue altogether, or this hormonogenesis. The gland is present, but there is enzymatic block in the process of thyroid hormone Synthesis. At any level of enzymes responsible for cellular hormone synthesis, we can have these hormone genes. The gland try to form the hormone, but it feeds. So the gland enlarges. The patient may have a huge goiter with low hormone level. This is congenital hypothyroidism. Presentation of hypothyroidism differ according to age. If hypothyroidism is present even in the or just after birth during the infancy, in early months or early years of life, the patient develops creatinine, which uh, creatinine in your pediatric course has uh, special features and uh, special uh, uh, phenotype, creatinine. If hypothyroidism starts at the adolescent stage, from 10 to 20 years, uh, it produces so-called juvenile hypothyroidism or juvenile myxedema. If it starts during adulthood after 20, it causes adult hypothyroidism or adult myxedema. <coughs> myxedema means the advanced clinical stage of hypothyroidism. Keratinase. As we have just said, due to ablasia or hypoglasia of thyroid tissue, this hormonogenesis due to enzymatic block in the process of hormone synthesis, iodine deficiency, use of antithyroid during the pregnancy. The mother uses antithyroid drug during the pregnancy, antithyroid drugs may cross the placenta, pass into the fetal circulation, 
reach the fetal thyroid and cause the same effect in the fetal thyroid can lead to fetal or neonatal hypothyroidism, particularly members entering easily uh, uh, across the placental bite, which is cardiomazole. Bendel syndrome, which is a combination of congenital hypothyroidism and nerve deficits. This is area syndrome, but it is known as Bendel syndrome association. Clinical picture of the creatine, subnormal body temperature, poor suckling, pediatrician, and the mother notice that the child sucking very weakly. Uh, face puffy eyes, depressed nasal bridge, macroglossia. The phenotype may or more or less may be similar to that of rickets. Not, uh, but it's a similar picture. Short uh, patient with uh, weak muscles, with protuberant abdomen, with depressed nasal bridge. And Macrognosia, thickening of the lips and thickening of the tongue with delayed dentition compared to your phenotype of rects. Hmm? Hands, square shaped hands, disproportionate dwarfism. It means we, uh, in, uh, uh, just after delivery, the infant is mainly trunk. Upper segment of the body is 1.6 compared to lower segment of the body to well. And at the age of 12, at the end of the primary school, their proportion is 1 to 1. All adults should be 1 to 1. Upper segment to lower segment is 1 to 1. This proportion to our physical in the creatine is in favor of increase in the upper segment compared to the lower segment. Okay? This is disproportionate dwarfism. Short limbs, upper segment more than the lower segment, and the higher more than the spectrum. Muscle weakness, again, compared to rectus. Patient with skeleton have muscle weakness, widening gait, protuberant abdomen, and the abdominal hairiness. Epiphyseal dysgenesis with thickening uh, of the growing gates of long bone and skin, lastly, but very importantly, is dry, rough, scaly, and cold. The position of mesometous tissue, particularly in the dorsum of the hand, is and sopra, clavicular, fossa, and fist. Very important to differentiate this patient with short stature is mental retardation. Mental retardation. Any all other features we have just said without mental retardation, most of the patient is not critical. Mental retardation is prerequisite, is essential to diagnose critical, as it is essential to diagnose mongolism. Okay? You can't diagnose mongolism almost without mental retardation. Any individual may have uh, slanting eyes, may have silky hair, may have some phenotypic manifestation of moon, but essentially the patient should have mental retardation. Here in keratin, the patient should have mental retardation, besides all other manifestations we have said. Okay? Uh, as you know, eltroxene is essential for brain development whether during the train life or in the two years in the early life of the individual, particularly in the first six months in the neonatal stage. There is hormone deficiency. During this very early period in life, it leads to mental retardation. Okay? <coughs> Cardiovascular manifestation, bradycardia, low volt, and the SCTT changes in the ACG. Investigation to confirm our clinical diagnosis, high serum levels, epiphyseal dysgenesis on brain X-ray from wounds, 
and you know thyroid hormones with high or very high TSH. Screening, it is a very important topic. Screening is mandatory all over the world, including our country here in Egypt. In neonate should be screened with a hospital delivery or home delivery or wherever. There is delivery, the neonate should be screened from the umbilical cord blood or heel punch to screen for TSH. To exclude from the very early days of life to exclude presence of hypothyroidism. We should not wait till clinical manifestations appear and the patient complains and the doctor notice and the doctor diagnose or suspect and confirm a lot of time pass during which a reversible brain damage should have occurred to the infant brain. So screening is mandatory for all new needs. Uh, I think uh, there is uh, in your pediatric course uh, three diseases should be screened in uh, early in natal life: phenylic ketonuria, 21 other serious deficiency, and hypothyroidism. Maybe some countries, maybe many countries, but this triad of diseases uh, should be screened because there is a real prevention. Phenylic ketonuria. 21 hydroxylic deficiency and hypocellulism. Juvenile myxedema, onset of hypocellulism in late childhood and before puberty. Normal mental functions, very important, compared with creatine, which have uh, mental retardation. Disproportionate to our face, because they uh, not yet, the uh, epiphysis is closed, epiphysiatic genesis and delayed puberty or paradoxically precocious puberty. Patient may have delayed puberty because uh, or paradoxically spill over with TCH high, without things up, may become high and lead to precocious puberty. Adult hypothyroidism or myxedema. I have two groups of causes. First group is primary thyroid failure, where we have a lesion in the thyroid gland itself. It's an anatomical part. Causes may include cardiovascular unknown cause, or thyroiditis, post thyroidectomy, post radioiodine, or use of goitrogens. Goitrogens may include food for supplements or drugs, which can destroy the thyroid gland. So, all these categories, part of the lesion is in the thyroid itself. Another category of causes may be related to the pituitary gland or the hypothalamus above the pituitary gland. Secondary thyroid failure, secondary pituitary failure or thyrotrophic because there is lesion in the pituitary leading to decrease in the TSH cytotrophic hormone compared in contrast to thyroprevin where the lesion is in the primary thyroid gland. Thyroprevin means poor thyroid tissue. Thyrotrophic means lesion in the trophic hormone. So category related to lesion in the thyroid, thyroprevic, or lesion in the pituitary or cytosalamus is thyrotrophic. Can be called also central hypothyroidism. Level above the thyroid gland, whether in the pituitary, in the hypothalamus, whatever, it is central hypothyroidism. Clinical administration of adult hypothyroidism includes as you know, thyroxine is uh, 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 metabolic stimulant for metabolism, general metabolism of the body is stimulated by thyroxine. Rate of metabolism and the metabolic rate of all tissues 
is dependent on cyroxene. So, when cyroxene is low, all metabolic processes are decreased. And this is reflected on clinical examination, as you will see. Expiration less apathetic fees. Patient is not reactive with the community, with the others, expiration less fees, mask fees. Apathetic means no reaction. He is not laughing, he is not crying. This, he has late reaction to uh, the surround community. Buffy eyes and buffy face due to the position of tissues, exomatous tissues, around the eyes and in the face, bloated face. Lost outer third of the eye, brown. And loss of hair, generally speaking, including scalp hair. Particular hair is loss of outer third of the eye, brown. As you know from your clinical rounds, leprosy and cosmotic are the two common causes for loss of the outer cell of the eye brand. Manner flush, redness over the cheeks, like that of mitral stenosis or globus erythematosus. Manner flush. Thickening of the lips and tongue. There is thickening all over the body of the patient, the nose, around the eyes, the lips, the tongue, the vocal cords, the larynx. Low body temperature with intolerance to cold weather, a common presentation of hypothyroid patient. Patient cannot tolerate cold weather because he has low metabolic rate. He has low thermogenesis, so he can't warm itself, himself. Okay? So the patient tolerate the cold weather very poorly. Skin is Characteristically, skin is one of the key features to diagnose hypothyroidism. Skin is thick. You have fold at the dorsum of the hand. The skin is thick, like that of acromegaly. Hmm? Skin here also in hypothyroidism is thick. Thick and dry. Scale from Extreme dryness, market dryness leads to scaly skin, like that of the fish. Dry, rough, scaly, like that of the fish. Pain and cause, because low metabolic rate leads to skin, uh, as we have normal skin, is moist. Moist by what? by sebaceous secretion and the sweet secretion. Our patient doesn't have sweet secretion enough or sebaceous secretion enough. By time, years, the skin of the patient is dry, rough, scaly, and thick, like that of the fish. But without weakness, unlike fish, okay? Carotino then means yellowish discoloration over the palm because of excess carotene, as you know from biochemistry, cyroxene is a catalyst for conversion of carotene to vitamin A. The question is blocked. Lack of vitamin A may lead to a skin or enhanced skin manifestation and the high carotene. Carotene appears in the palm of the hands. So this patient may have carotene tear. Cheeks, there is flush, redness, and the palm, there is yellowish discoloration. The patient has weakness, fatigue, arthralgia, and musculoskeletal pain. One of the common presentations of the hypothyroid patient is fatigue, general fatigue, general weakness, and joint pain and muscle pain. Uh, even may lead to uh, wrong diagnosis. Some patients may have even positive rheumatoid factors and diagnose erroneously as rheumatoid arthritis because of severe muscle pain, muscle aches, joint pains, bone aches, general fatigue. Okay? Slow movements and weight, slow movements. 
everything in our patient is slow down, including movements. Okay? So patient have, our patient has slow movements and slow movements and the eating no cellogenesis or no cellogenesis, the patient may gain some kilos increase in body weight. Not massive increase in body weight or massive obesity, but mild or mood increase in body weight. Cardiovascular manifestations of hypothyroidism include circulation, all parameters of the cardiovascular system are slowed down, excluding only one parameter. That is eh? hypertension. Collectively, our patient is hypometabolism, hypertension. Okay? We have sinus bradycardia. We have all forms of heart block at the level of the sinoatrial or at the level of the AV bundle or the bundle branches, whatever the level. We have heart block. We have myocardial effusion. And this pericardial effusion may be named cholesterol pericarditis. This pericardial effusion characteristically does not lead to cardiac tamponade because it is slowly accumulating. So the patient, the chest adapts and there is no constriction preventing the heart from failing or impairing the diastolic function. This is very rarely okay. So pericardial effusion is slowly accumulating, may be massive, but interestingly, rarely lead to cardiac tamponade or hemodynamic compromise. Okay? The other name, pericardial effusion can occur in many other conditions. Commonly, TB, uremia, infection, amoeba, many other causes. No, no, this is uh, uh, another name for uh, pericardial effusion with hypothyroidism. Maybe etiopathologically related to the position of cholesterol. No more. Uh, but uh, interestingly, I have to remember that it really produces cardiac tamponade. Enhanced atherosclerosis affecting the coronary and the peripheral arteries because of presence of hypertension, astrogenic level profile, and hyperhomocystinemia. Mixedema heart disease may be related to ischemic background or metabolic background. Both uh, uh, factors may interplay to produce mixedema heart disease, means cardiomyopathy and heart failure in advanced cases. Hypertension, especially the story due to increase the peripheral resistance, cardiomegaly and congestive heart failure, rarely asymmetric septal hypertrophy, so acronym called ASH, means increase of the septum, interventricular septum, compared to the free wall of the left ventricle. ACG changes sinus bradycardia, prolonged PR interval, low voltage QRS, and the ACDT changes, so which may be related to ischemic background, cardiomyopathic background, or pericardial effusion. The three conditions lead to these ECG changes. Neurologic manifestation. Everything in the nervous system of this patient is slowed down. Poor cerebral performance, poor thinking, poor memory, and hypersomnia, excessive sleep, increased hours of sleep. This patient may continue sleeping during the day and night. May not get up until the next day or the next after the next day. Hypersomnia because CNS slowed down like a car when you turn off your contact. Okay? 
uh, horses of voice with their speech. Horses of voice is the position of these tissue, mesomital tissue, or glucosa minimally can in the larynx and over the vocal cords. We have thickening of the lips, we have thickening of the tongue. All of these, we have weakness of the muscles, lead to slurred speech. Slurred means monotonous with a slow rate of words spoken by the patient. And in the same tone, there is no rise, there is no down, there is no up. The same tone, tedious. Hmm? Slurred speech. Suspended tendon jerk or delayed muscle relaxation compared to myotonia. Suspend. Huh? Peripheral neuropathy, as any, uh, uh, like your course of cytotoxicosis, there is metabolic neuropathy, uremia, there is metabolic neuropathy, uh, liver cell failure, there is metabolic neuropathy, many other conditions. Still, in the metabolism, we have peripheral neuropathy. Patient complain of love and stopping the anesthesia, burning, and etc. etc. Intermittent neuropathy, like carpal tunnel syndrome, because of overcrowdedness of the tissues uh, below the flexor retinaculum, in front of the wrist joint, or tarsal tunnel syndrome, or ulnar nerve at the elbow. Any entrapment neurobus can occur in this patient. Like that of acromegaly, of obesity, of diabetes, of rheumatoid, all these diseases may have also entrapment neurobus. Muscle hypertrophy involving the gastrocnemius muscle, the back muscles, and the upper limb muscles with EMG myopathic exchanges. Myopathy like that of Duchenne, if you have in the course of neurology. Pseudo hypertrophy of muscle. The muscle is bulky, hypertrophied, but at the same time weak, with low power or no power. Mexedema madness, psychosis at the end stage, with frank psychosis. Okay? Mentality now is very low with reactions, aggressive or unwanted reactions in this patient. This is myxedema madness. Myxedema coma is the final stage of CMS affection and it is fatal in maybe 30 to 50 percent of cases are going to die if they develop uh, myxedema coma. Gastrointestinal manifestations include gastritis with low gastric motility. Any parameter you can put low or decreased, except lipids and hypertension. All other things are decreased. Okay? Atrophic gastritis with low gastric motility, atrophic intestinal villi with slow absorption and might lead to steatorrhea, paradoxically. The patient has constipation, obstinate. Obstinate constipation. Up to mega colon and pseudo intestinal obstruction with illness in some cases. Intestinal tool and intestinal movements is very poor. Patient have distended abdomen and constipation, one of the common presentation of a patient with hypothyroidism. Patient may develop ascites, like in the two pericardial effusion. We don't see this uh, uh, manifestation commonly, but it's reported and in our textbooks. Patient with hypothyroidism may have ascites. Reproductive manifestations. Menstrual disturbances as menorrhagia or oligomenorrhea. As a rule, cytotoxic females have oligomenorrhea and hypothyroid females have menorrhagia. As a rule.
but many exceptions can occur, and any form of ministerial irregularities can occur in either hyperthyroid or hyperthyroid. So, of course, subfertility and the anovulation may be related to the hypometabolic state, and the ovary is not exception. It is also in hypometabolic state, so there is no ovulation and there is subfertility or associated autoimmune affection or touch of the ovarian tissue. Amenorrhea, galactorrhea syndrome, this female may have amenorrhea and uh, breast secretions or galactorrhea, either due to hypothyroidism itself or due to associated high prolactin levels, associating hypothyroidism. Common practice in fertility out clinic patients to measure prolactin and the DCH at the same time to exclude this possibility. A spontaneous abortion, this also occurs in some psychosis or hypothyroidism. Fertility and abortion or miscarriage or fetal losses can occur in cytotoxic or hypothyroid patients either due to metabolic state itself or associating antibodies crossing the placenta and leading to Problems with placental tissue and fetal loss. Pregnancy induced hypertension. In patients with hypertension, with pregnancy, there is higher incidence of toxemia of pregnancy or pre-eclamptic toxemia. We have hypothyroid uh, having the same problem. Cranicomastia in males, like that of cyrotoxic, the other side. Cytotoxic males may have gynecomastia, hypothyroid males may have gynecomastia also. Urogenital manifestations reduce the renal plasma flow and the glomerular filtration rate, increase total body water, and subsequently there is hyponatremia, dilution and hyponatremia because of retention of water inside circulation of this fish or body of this fish. Even can reach the syndrome of SIEDH, syndrome of inappropriate secretion of antidiuretic hormone. This patient may have, with high TSH, may have high gonadotrophin. With high TSH, may have high prolactin. With high TSH, may have antidiuretic hormone. With high antidiuretic hormone, unneeded antidiuretic hormone. So it is inappropriate. Inappropriate, yani unneeded, means unneeded. Unneeded or inappropriate ADH causes water retention inside our body. Water retention, whether inside the circulation or in the tissue species. Respiratory manifestations include dyspnea. This patient. As we have said in the beginning of the lecture, the patient is fatigued and the bone aches. These patients cannot do movements easily, cannot do exercise easily. So this patient complains of dyspnea. This dyspnea may be related to respiratory muscle weakness, as skeletal muscle, or cardiac muscle weakness, cardiomyopathy, as we have said, may be related to pleural effusion. This patient may have ascites, may have pericardial effusion, may have pleural effusion. Any service may bring me ooze in this patient. Or pulmonary function abnormalities, so-called VQ uh, uh, mismatch, or diffusion of gases may be affected. So this patient has this, globally speaking, this patient is prone to develop dyspnea. This patient also may have sleep apnea. Sleep apnea means apnea period during sleep. Sleep apnea may be obstructive or peripheral due to uh, troubles in the tongue, in the lips, in the pharynx, in the larynx, in the palatopharyngeal laryngeal area or tissues, or may be central from the spiratory center itself in the medulla or the brain stem. So we have the two components. This patient has sleep apnea of obstructive nature and of central nature. Central, 
is understood because the brain is slowed down. And the peripheral also or obstructive sleep apnea can be understood through enlargement of the tongue, enlargement of the lips, enlargement of bulk of pharyngeal muscles, and thickening of the vocal cords. This patient is prone to develop sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is a risk factor for hypertension, for diabetes, for sympathetic trouble, for arrhythmia, even for sudden death. Sleep apnea is not a simple diagnosis. The last respiratory manifestation is sinusitis because of dryness. Dryness of the paranasal sinuses can lead, can invite for infection. And this patient may have chronic sinusitis. Even they may develop fungus. Uh, affection of these sites, so-called fungus bone, may inhabit the sinuses of these species. Metabolic manifestations include a slowing of metabolic processes as a whole, which result in decreased energy expenditure, oxygen consumption, and use of substrate, reduced thermogenesis, decreased appetite with increased body fat. Hypercholesterolemia with high LDL, high lipoprotein DTPA, and high oxidized LDL. Cholesterol can be used as a marker for tissue hypothyroidism. The higher the cholesterol, the lower the thyroid hormone. Or the higher the cholesterol, the higher the TSH. Okay? As a marker for tissue hypothyroidism. Normal triglyceride or modestly elevated. There is hyperhomocysteinemia, one of the risk factors, newly common in the battery of risk factors for atherosclerosis is hyperhomocysteinemia. Metallurgic manifestations include anemia, normocytic normochromic, or iron deficiency due to menorrhagia, or microcytic hyperchromic because of associated pernicious anemia. We have said there's atrophic gastritis, but we will be glad. Atrophic gastritis associated with microcytic hyperchromic anemia. Usually, many types or all types of anemia apart from aplastic anemia can occur in patients with hypothyroidism. Normal leukocytic count and platelets, bleeding tendency may be present because of prolonged bleeding type thromboacemia, means decreased functions of platelets and low factor 8. Endocrine administrations, this is a, maybe the last category of administrations, endocrine, cerebral gland, endocrine gland. Other endocrine glands may be affected also thyroidly. Decreased to human growth hormone secretion due to increased somatostatinergic 2, with resulting decrease in IGF-1 or somatomedine 1, somatomedine C. You may explain the short stature uh, uh, of cretins in these patients. Decreased to human growth hormone. Even when we are diagnosing short stature in patients presenting with this complaint, the patient have hypothyroidism, we have to correct first the hypothyroid state and then do provocation for human growth hormone. If we did human growth hormone provocation as a test to diagnose short stature in presence of hypocyrocinemia or hypocyrocinemia is wrong. Okay? It's not correct. We should first correct thyroid status or metabolic status and borovo or examine for human growth hormone. Moderate hypercholactinemia due to high TRH, so-called speed of TSH, along side there is increase in prolactin. Why pituitary fossa? Enlargement of the size of the pituitary fossa due to hyperplasia and the enlargement of cytotroph cells because there is increased stimulation 
of cyanotrophic. So the dividing of the pituitary fossa even can lead to a diagnosis of pituitary adenoma with advanced and long-standing hypothyroidism. Reduce the bone turnover, decrease the activity of osteoblasts and osteoclasts. As you know, bone tissue is a deep tissue. It is not a deep tissue. So there is usually, there is always osteoblast activity with new bone formation, osteoclast activity and uh, this of bone tissue. There is a rate. In, in hypothyroidism, the rate is decreased. For both osteoblast and the osteoclast. So, we have reduced the whole term of these markers to measure the term of rates for <coughs> myogenesis or for catabolism uh, 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 of bone. Decreased metabolic clearance and production of cortisol with normal cortisol level. Lab diagnosis high TSH, which is also a screen test. If I have uh, a, a screening program in any category of patients for pregnant females, for uh, old ladies, for geriatric uh, individuals, for any category. We have to screen with TSH as a screening test. If more than 5 or more than 10 or more than whatever we uh, uh, conventionally do, this is a screening test for high charges. Also, there is low 3 to 4 or low T3, low T4 in primary hypothyroidism. In central hypothyroidism, there is low TSH and low 3 to 4. High TSH, but normal 3 to 4 diagnosed so called subclinical hypothyroidism. Here in this category, the patient is okay. And the, the thyroid hormones also are okay, but we have a slight increase in the TSH. This is subclinical hypothyroidism. You have also subclinical thyroid Normal thyroid hormone and TSH is low. Treatment of hypothyroidism replacement hormone treatment is a very simple. With all our levels of sodium in a daily dose of 1.6 microgram per kg per day, average dose is 100 to 200 microgram per day. Orally, better before breakfast or in the store. There is no need to divide the dose. One time for breakfast, very simple. Uh, the rule is to start low and to go slow. Yes? Start low and go slow in titrating our, our dose. If we have a young patient like our colleague and the hypothyroidism with no heart disease, I can start by 100 microgram per day and increment it, stepping up my dose by 50 milligram after one month. Okay? Today I give him 100 microgram and I measure TSH after one month. Still high, I step up my dose to 150 microgram. There is no problem. On the other side, if I have an old patient, 70 years old, or a patient with ischemic heart disease and arrhythmia and DAF, hypertension, diabetes, etc., etc. I should start with a low dose, maybe 50 micrograms. After one month, I measure TSH. It's still high. My incremental dose is 25. 50 become 75. Yes? So the old patient, the cardiac patient, I should be very fastidious, very fine, very kind with increasing the dose of cyanocin. Because if I give higher doses, intolerable doses for this patient, I may precipitate heart failure. I may, I may precipitate arrhythmia. Okay? I, would, I may put the patient in a, 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 a failure or collapse of the circulation if the patient is severely mixed in. <coughs> the 
מפסידים מקום רי, לא צורי. Life's written clinical condition in patients with long-standing severe high priorities. Precipitating factors, so all risk factors you know, surgery, trauma, infection, stroke, or exposure to cold or drugs, gastrointestinal bleeding, acute MI, all major risk factors you know for any individual of us can precipitate myxedema coma. Typical patient is elderly woman in winter season. With all the cellulation, hypothermia, the patient is very cold. All the central nervous system with disorientation, lizard, psychosis, and coma, and all the cardiovascular system with bradycardia and hypotension. Here the patient is hypotensive. So we have failure of the three major items. Thing is the cardiovascular and cell regulation compared with cytotoxic crisis. Again, cardiovascular thing is cell regulation, but in the other direction, only for cell regulation. There is hyperpyrexia, here there is hypothermia. Maybe CRT1, CRT2, CRT3, very, very low body, cold body temperature. Laboratory diagnosis for myxedema coma, low 3, T4, TSH is usually high, usually high, expected to be always up. Here the patient may be not high TSH because of failure again of the treatment, because of the critical illness. Okay? Characteristically CBK, enzyme of the muscles. CBK, we have three CBK of the brain, of the muscle, of the cardiac muscle, LCBK is sky high, very, very, very high from myopathic or myocytes. Treatment of myxedema coma starts with levothyroxine, 300 to 500 microgram IV, then replacement daily dosing as usual. T3 may be given if available. IV may be given if available. We are here in Egypt, we don't have parental therapy. We give oral therapy. Hydrocortisone, IV from 100 to 200 mg per day in divided doses, supportive treatment, plantis for hypothermia, mechanical ventilation for hyperventilation, whole blood or saline for hypotension, mild diffusion respiration for hyponatremia, and IV glucose for hypoglycemia. Finished my talk and any comments or any question. I hope you understand. Hmm? Yes. Uh, normal values for hormones. Normal values for hormones. You can resolve your box. For TSH, you have to remember what all the time that TSH normal value is 0.525 UIU per mill, micro international unit per mill. You can remember 0.525, okay? Or 0.424. This is, again, a, a normal figure. Recently, the figure decreased to only two and a half. From 0.4 to two and a half. This is very important figure. Because there, is, there are many conditions which you can diagnose. Subclinical hypothyroidism above two and a half and you should implement replacement therapy. In this, yes, special conditions, subclinical, thyroid disorder may be wait and see policy. But in some cases, you have to give treatment. This is special situation, like pregnancy female. Subclinical hypothyroid in pregnancy, you should give thyroid At 2.5. 
Yes. Huh? Oh. Cholesterolemia. This is the, the, the typical feature of uh, hypothyroidism. I mean, this is a marker of tissue hypothyroidism. Uh, tissue hypothyroidism. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is a very different topic. Now we have a lab figure, which is read as abnormal. What is the differential diagnosis? What is the clinical impact? Another story. Okay, genetic, diet related, or secondary to another disease. Maybe nephrosis, maybe hypothyroid, maybe, 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 maybe. Okay, this is another story. Huh? Yes. Uh, Doctor, what you mean by mesimatous substance? Uh, Mexidema madness? Uh, substance. 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 What does it mean by mesimatous substance? How did it again? Very, very. Mesimatous substance. Substance? Yes. Yes. Mesimatous substance? Yes. Mesimatous substance. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you have in your book? Yes. You can give me. Yes. Uh, uh, the endocrine manifestation, you said that uh, it will be decreased metabolism of clearance and production of cortisol. But with normal serum cortisol, what, what is it? How does it happen to be normal? Serum level of any material, not only hormones, is the product of what? Input and output. Okay, output for hormones, maybe all hormones, what is it? Metabolism of our hormones. Usually, cytochrome B450 in the liver. Mm -hmm. And most of the drugs, as you have seen in your course of pharmacology, mm -hmm. metabolism of hormones. Most, most drugs are metabolized in, where? in the cytochrome B450. So, Metabolism or catabolism of cortisol is decreased because there is decrease in the rate of metabolism of cytochrome B450. But there is also decrease in the rate of production from the adrenal gland because all glands are low dose. Okay? Yes? <coughs> the position of Mizunodas substance. What's the problem? Ah, yes, yes, mixometer substance, mixometer tissue. This mixometer substance is a combined molecule of carbohydrate and protein. This is an old terminology. The new terminology is CAG, glucose amino glycan. <coughs> you uh, have uh, with the thyroid, thymobus in Graves disease, Proptosis occurs due to the position of gag behind the arm, glucose amino glycan, mm -hmm. which is protein and carbohydrate tended to disappear chemically. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is mixometer's tissue. Mm -hmm. huh? It results from Yes, it occurs in hypothyroidism and occurs in certain causes behind the arm. Yes, we can ask for total CBK, we can ask for the ISO enzyme. If you have, you have a patient in the intensive care and expected to have MI, acute myocardial infarction, you can ask for MBCBK for the cardiac muscle. If you have, if you have brain infarction, you can ask for BBCBK. If you have muscle, you have the ISO enzyme of MMCBK. Okay? Any question? Any comment? See you tomorrow or after tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.